Are you armed and dangerous? Yes. Glory to God. God is good. All the time. Even when you don't feel it. Even when you don't feel good, he's still good. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, God's got a plan. Amen? Amen? You ever go through something you just don't know what to do? I can tell you something. If you say something. I mean, there's many times we're like getting to a point like, man, what the snap? What do I do? You know what you do? Nothing. You wait. Why? Because God's got a plan. That's all you have to do is say it. Lord, I know you got a plan. And then wait. And don't try and figure it all out. Because you're just going to mess it up. Amen? Amen? Those who wait on the Lord will be renewed. Their strength will be renewed. We wait. There's a waiting room. And there's a waiting room for everything. There's labels of waiting rooms. There's storehouses of waiting rooms. <laughs> you got to wait on things. You know what wait does? Kills you. Everybody hates to wait. <laughs> I know when I got to wait, I'm going, oh, he's killed me some more. That's the area of crucifying your own flesh. You got to wait. God's got a plan. Amen? <laughs> I can tell you, I'm going to give you a little updated news before we get going. In the UK, the United Kingdom, there is a global international court system. And there has been a lawsuit for genocide filed by the United Kingdom and all of their doctors and attorneys. They have gathered together. It is the first international criminal trial. This is a British group of doctors. It is against the crimes against humanity, violation of war crimes, the United Kingdom, and other countries as well. And December 6, 2021, they filed this, and it's now in court. It is to halt a coronavirus, ID cards, and illegal warfare against UK people, and a close globally. And because they are blocking of the cures of the viruses, it is a, um, it is a, they consider it murder and war crimes against humanity. They're doing a full investigation of it now. They say because of all the lockdowns and wrongful treatments, they call it genocide against humanity and they call it war crimes. Because world leaders knew of these effects to stabilize wealth and power to the few of the elect that they may depopulate on a global level. This is what they considered, they called it a holocaust all over again, but much a larger scale on a global one that our eyes are seeing it today. Hallelujah. These charges are brought against Dr. Fauci, who's the director of NIAID. Dr. Peter Desrek, who's the Health Alliance. Bill Gates, Melinda Gates, Albert Burrell, the chairman of Pfizer. Stephanie Burrell, the chairman of Mandura. Pascal Soriet, the chairman of uh, Zeniza, Alice Grunsky, who is the chairman and, uh, and director and I guess CEO of Johnson and Johnson, terrorist or trade treacherous Abram, whatever his name is, who is a wealth organization. Uh, he's the chairman. Boris Johnson, the prime minister of the world, K UK. Christopher Whitney. Uh, uh, who's the uh, chairman of the Medical Advisor Board of UK. Um, Martha Hancock, the British uh, Health Center uh, person. I'm just naming off these names. These are some of the charges against the plus more. Juan, uh, Joanne Roger, the company UK Health Center. Dr. Raz uh, Shiraz, something like that, uh, who's uh, the Rockefeller Foundation. 
and um, Klaus Schwab, Schwab, yeah, who is the world economic, who is the president of the World Economic Forums. These people have been apparently these lawsuits are against them right now for genocide of global effect. They're finally getting off their blessed assurance and doing something. They've been asleep so stinking long. Things are happening more than what you realize. Amen? Amen. We're seeing a tremendous transition right now. And, and what's happening right now, and I just want to talk a little bit. It's called the unveiling process. Everyone say the unveiling process. process. It's a global unveiling process right now. And 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and the word it speaks about the unveiling process. In verse 1 it says, Therefore, since we have this ministry, have received mercy, we do not lose heart. Don't lose heart. Don't give up. Don't quit. But we have renounced. That word renounce mean, are we renounced the hidden things of shame? In other words, repented. I want to say repented. repented. See, renounce is to repent. And that's to be washed by the blood of the way and turn away, not do it again. Not walking in craftiness or handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our veil, our gospel is veiled, the message of truth is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Whose minds, whose thoughts the God of his age has taken captive or blinded. Who do not believe lest the light of the gospel or the glory of Christ. Who is the image of God should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves but Christ Jesus the Lord. And ourselves your bond servants for Jesus sake. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. Who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. In the face of Jesus Christ. Now, again, to renounce hidden things is to repent. The message is of the truth to f in, in, in freedom of Christ. Why? Because to be blinded means it's been blocked. It's been stopped. It's been veiled or blinded to individual souls. The souls of humanity. They are living outside of salvation's truth that's called lost, L-O-S-T. Living outside of salvation's truth. They're lost. They're deceived. They've been taken captive. You and I were once that. This is the cause of the lack of divine fellowship. What he's doing is, is the powers of darkness are preventing fellowship. That's their job. If they can prevent fellowship, they know they can easily deceive you. I don't care how long you've been a Christian. I don't care how much you read your Bible. Without God's presence, you can do nothing. That's where people fall into religiosity. Well, I know God's word. Well, do you know him? You might know what he spoke, but do you know him? That's where personal divine relationship is essential. People wouldn't be doing the things that they do if there was a closer divine relationship. That's what he's doing right now. That's why he's un we're in an unveiling process. Remember, judgment begins in the house of God before it begins everywhere else. So while he's judging other nations and countries and so forth now, he's judging the house of God and then even at a higher level. He's saying, get it together. It's time. Quit playing games. Time's running out. Amen? First John chapter 1. Unveiling process. We are in this process, a global process. In verse 5. Let's speak it, please. And this is the message which we have heard from him and declared to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship, divine fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie. And we do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have divine fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from sin. If we say that we do not sin, we have not sinned, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins... He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Again, without turning away from sin, the presence of evil and the desires of the flesh, the lust of the eye and the lust of self and pride. 
There is no activation of the blood. We must repent from it and turn away from it. Why? Because everything you and I speak in repentance is activating something. There must be an activation by the power of your breath, the power of your words. There's activation. And we activate the blood of Christ by our repentance and turning away from darkness. When that blood is activated, you have access to divine fellowship. Without the blood being activated, you can't get there. You can do all the weeping you want, and you ain't getting there. He says you must turn from it. There was somebody else that sought repentance. And, and God said no. He didn't grant it. I think his name was Esau. Hello? Remember? He sold his birthright. That he wanted repentance. And he cried and cried and cried. And the Lord said, I got your cries, but you didn't turn. Because he wasn't truly repentant. He was just back wanting the birthright back. See, God knows the heart why people do repent. Oh, Lord, I repent. Just restore my family. Forget it, homie. You repent because of the things you did, not for anything to get. Amen? Glory. And what does the blood of Jesus do? It cleanses us from the presence and the power of sin. Demons. There will be no fellowship without the divine creator, with the divine creator, without repentance. He will allow you access to his presence, power, and truth in the anointing then. But there must be a true repentance and turn away. And then you must be obedient. It's amazing how many people don't, you know, they, they know the word, but won't, won't believe it. And there are things that doesn't cause you to not get into heaven, amen? But there are things that are going to cause you to have a rough life here on earth. That are going to open the doors to the enemy. The Bible, what, what's the word said? The word says, will a man rob God? Would anybody here decide to rob God? I hope not. You can't take it from a storehouse because he ain't letting you in anyways. <laughs> but it says they rob, he says you rob me from tithes and offerings. You don't bring any money to my fellowships so I can feed the clothing shelter, bring Bibles to the jails and do this and do that. He said you're cursed because you disobey. You can't give up your 10%. I ought to ask for your 90 Those are the simple things that bring a curse on a family. But they don't get it. You know why? No divine fellowship. Oh, there's a form of godliness. Oh, they may love the Lord in their own thinking, but they're not following or obeying because if you love me, you'll obey me. Does everybody get it? He's saying, tighten up. Tighten up. Oh, hallelujah. Acts 17. What's he doing? He's unveiling the process. He's unveiling everything right now. Remember, we're in a strong second wind right now. It's exposing everything. He is releasing conviction. And those who refuse conviction, he will chasten. And those who refuse his chastening, he will judge. <laughs> Acts 17 and verse 26. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Everybody okay? Let's speak it together, please. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth, and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings, so that they should seek the Lord and hope that they might go for him and what? Find him. What does this word say? Seek and you will what? Find. Amen. Though he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and we move and we have our being, as also some of your poets have said, for we are all, are all sold to what? 
his offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone or something shaped by art and man's devising. Truly, these times of stupidity and ignorance, God is overlooked. But now he what? Commands. Here we go. He commands. This is not a, an asking. This is a commandment. You want my favor? You want my blessing? You want me to be close to you? Here you go. All men everywhere to what? repent because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a, the man of whom he ordained he has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead wow he commands all humanity at some point to come to repentance to turn away from the evil presence and lies and turn to the way truth and life in Christ Jesus before final judgment. This is divine fellowship. Divine fellowship. Everyone say divine fellowship. Divine fellowship. Philippians chapter 2. 2 verse 1 please. Therefore if there is any consolation in Christ. If any comfort of love. If any fellowship of the spirit. If any affection and mercy. Fulfill my joy by being like minded. Having the same love. Being of one accord of one mind, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also the interests of others. And let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in a form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God but made himself with no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and, becoming, and coming in the likeness of men. Wow. Fellowship, divine fellowship with his spirit to become like-minded, like Christ. Allowing, see, one of the things that is so important, when you're in divine fellowship, you're closer, your perception is different than others. Your perception is different they can't see what you see. There's a level of perception. Multiple levels of perception. We went to a house yesterday. We got a call. Somebody wanted some work done. I'm thinking, okay. Wasn't sure what the whole thing was about. This woman, was. she answers the door in her mask. She was a mask at night. And uh, she wasn't going to, I knew she wasn't going to ask us anything. And uh, so she asked us to do the strangest things. Uh, she kept, she was so concerned and so fearful about her electricity went up. She's got the dryer on full blast. She got the washer on. And she's wanting us to vacuum out her refrigerator underneath. Okay, you know, there's a reason why I'm here, Lord. I think this girl is strange and fearful for everything. And uh, then she has to do a couple other, oh, and, and adjust a shower head. Because she was afraid of the water. It was going to bring too much money. It was dripping or something. Was, some of the things were clogged up. I'm going, this is loony. And then, oh, drain her hot water heater so it would be more efficient. And then lower the heat because she wanted to save money. I mean, this woman is paranoid from head to toe. I'm like, man, what the heck? Strange. So, by the time we got done with all of this stuff, I mean, it wasn't long or anything. I'm thinking. And so the Lord said, share with, your, share with her a little bit of your testimony. So I shared with her what's what. I didn't get into the serpent part yet because I knew something wasn't strange here. I think I was talking to one. And uh, the words came out of her mouth. I mean, out of nowhere. I hate Trump. I'm thinking, Whoa. 
Now I know why this woman's a loony too. And she's saying all kinds of stuff. I grabbed her hand and I said, I'm sorry, but he does have the right spirit. And uh, I said, you're going to tell me to abide? Uh, uh, abide, same guy. Abide, oh, that'll be the new name. Oh, Biden is doing anything better in this world? You're going to tell me the world is better today? Oh, well, it's the Republicans that are doing all this. I said, okay. So it starts, now, here, it starts pouring outside. She's got an umbrella thing out on her porch. Oh, I'm afraid it's going to blow away. I'm thinking, oh, okay. All right. I go out there in the pouring rain. I roll it down. I'm getting soaked. And she goes, tie it up. I'm like, tie it up. I'm soaking wet. She answers me at the door. She comes with a towel, wipes herself off, doesn't even offer me the towel. I'm like, this is crazy. I'm like, this is the twilight zone. I said, 100 bucks, I'm out of here. <laughs> that was it. I left her uh, a penetrating prayer book. I hope she goes to Army in America. That prayer. Oh, snap. But I realized she's blinded. The poor woman's blind. I add her to the, my hit list, you know, my prayers. I got a hit list of prayers of people, man. They're coming down. They're going to get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and turn around. And I'm like, man, I can't. I mean, the reality of such a veil. I couldn't wait to get out of there. I mean, I thought I entered psycho zone. It was crazy. But, uh, but that's not the only house, man. There's millions of them. All over the world. People are blinded and deceived. And again, this is, a, this is what God's doing. He's unveiling. He wants to unveil her, to rescue her. I wasn't about to get in any arguments or whatever. I, I left her the information. Oh, she, oh, she kept saying, and we shared, she asked us what we do and this and that. Told her we're Christians. And she goes, oh, I, yeah, I'm something. Unitarian or humanitarian or I don't know. But she believes in science. I said, look, at science will always prove God. Science will prove God. It's okay. You want to seek science, seek science? God is God. You can, you know, you'll find Jesus. But anyways, it was, it was definitely hilarious. And I was soaked. But it was, it was well worth it, I guess. <laughs> John 10. We're part of the global unveiling. We are not only in the process of it, but your prayers are unveiling individuals. You can't quit. Hallelujah. The Gospel of John, chapter 10. Hallelujah. And, I, well, you know, a lot of our stuff comes from, there's a sweet brother in Christ who works at Lowe's. He gives our cards out all the time. So he calls me yesterday after I come home. He just happened to call. I come home. Man, I'm running out of cards. I need more cards. I'm thinking, man, I don't know if I want to give you any more. <laughs> but it's like, I mean, he's a sweet guy, you know. And uh, so we get a lot of work from them, from him. He sends us, and then word of mouth from there. In fact, that woman came from a recommendation from somebody else we did stuff with, who's her friend. Now I'm concerned about the other one. I'm not going to lie. You hang around with people like that, something ain't right. Anyways, John 10, verse 1. Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. 
and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. I want you to know that as a believer, there's going to be a point at some time where you're going to hear the audible voice of God call your name. Every true believer will hear the voice of God call your name at some point in time when you least expect it. Verse 4. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep do what? They follow him. For they know his voice. Yet they will not by no means follow a stranger. What they will say is no. But will flee from him. For they do not know the voice of the stranger. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Again, the sheep hear and know his voice. They know his words. They know his desires. They know his leading. They know his unction. They know his conviction. And they will refuse to agree with the voice of the stranger because of divine fellowship. Does everybody get that? Everything is about divine. The closer you are to the Lord, the more you're going to say no, the more you're going to have perception, the more you're going to have more discernment, everything, everything else. That's why God is unveiling. He's bringing his people together closer and closer to him. Because what does the Bible say? In the latter days, there's going to be a lot of deception. There's going to be great delusion. We're in it already. We don't have to wait for it. It's here. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12. Verse 25, please. Hebrew 12. You know, you can't make this stuff up, man. I mean, this, is, this, is, this is what we're living in right now. It's plumb crazy out there. <clears throat> and the word tells us that, you know, Men will be against men. People will be deceived. There will be an offense. There's just, I mean, there's so much hatred. And you know what? That was the first thing I realized. There was such hatred behind her voice. Such hatred for, for things she doesn't even understand. And that's what the area of that veil does. It, it keeps an individual into self, into hatred and selfishness. They're like, they're enclosed. They can't see beyond. And then they listen to all the stuff that they can't discern. That's all it's doing, promoting more hatred. It's like putting wood on a fire. And that's what the Word tells us and warns us about in the last days. Hatred. Hatred for your brother. Hatred for everything. Hallelujah. It says, love your enemies. <clears throat> that's a tough one, isn't it? Love your men. I mean, I love her. I want to slap the hell out of her and make room for heaven. But praise God. Wake up. But you can't. You bet you can do it in the spirit. Amen. You got to pray in the spirit. Lord, open their eyes. Open their ears. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Verse 25, let's speak it. See that you do not what? Refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. Now, they're not hearing God's voice, are they? Because there's not a divine fellowship. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also the what? Heaven. Why? To unveil. It is the process of unveiling. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as the things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Now, this is not materialism. These are people. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. The shaking is the unveiling process of God to expose and remove those things that promote deception, fear, and ungodly acts against humanity on a global level. 
First Peter chapter 1. <clears throat> I uh, saw the other day, I don't remember what uh, site it was at, but it's a, it's a, it was a, a breaking news site, and, they, and what was being exposed was that the, uh, the Marines, under the real president, were going in, and they were taking one individual out at a time now. In fact, what they said, I don't know how true it is, is that Loretta Lynch was arrested already and brought to Guantanamo. So I don't know how true that is. But they said that they went in, they were following her for a period of time, and they waited for her to be alone. They went in while she was sleeping. The Marines entered her house. First thing they did was taped her mouth. Then they zip-tied her hands, woke her up, and had a sign. You are being arrested for treason. And they gathered out. She kicked and tried to scream. They, nobody heard her. And they brought her out and flew her out of here. That was what was told. They said they're doing this on a basis, one-to-one. -one. It's the process. You're not willing to cooperate, you will be removed. Amen? How many others are being arrested that we don't know about? Remember, I don't know if you remember, but I told you that there was a, a journalist that uh, was visited. He's got a website. People go to his website. He's got a lot of followers. And he was visited by two government agents. And uh, they came to ask him questions. And he, you know, he didn't want to answer anything. He said, wait, what are you guys doing? He said, look, we know you got a lot of followers. And... Uh, there's some things that we need to release to you. And he said, well, who do you work for? He said, we're government. He said, so he stepped back and he said, all right, who's your president? And he said, Don, they said, Donald Trump. He says, okay, what you got to say? And they released a bunch of information. He said, don't, don't, they told him, do not release this now, but you can release it at a certain time. And they said, they told him that they were going to other journalists that have followers so that everybody can be informed and updated. Is that powerful or what? I mean, things are happening and people just don't know it. But you know, that's where you and I got to trust God. We, listen, he's God. He's going to have the last say and he's got a plan. Amen? And we trust that he's going to bring us through this. And we're going to prosper at the end of this. Hallelujah. Things are going to be turned around. Verse 3. Is everybody there? 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorrupted and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for us who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Are we in the last time? Right, yeah. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you are being unveiled. <laughs> you have been grieved by various trials. Hello, you're being unveiled. That the genuineness of your faith, whether you're genuine or not, remember we talked about genetic or generic, Amen. Whether you're generic or you're genetic. Being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Grieved by trials. Proving your genuineness or your betrayal. Whether you're genetic, inherited, or generic. Amen? Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5, verse 8. For you were once what? Darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no 
fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but what? Rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. That's called the unveiling. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake. Now, some of this unveiling is going to cause people to awake and turn. Amen? That's the plan of God. That people become unveiled, awake, and turn. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Praise God. So he's exposed wickedness to awake by the unveiling process of, unfortunately, in chaos. Many people awake when they become, they're realizing they're losing a fear of loss. In other words, they're, they're in fear of losing everything. Oh, help, you know. All this is the exposure process. People end up in a survival mode, and the Lord wants to get them out of a survival mode into a surrender mode where they can trust and they can get close to him so they can discern. Discern and have the great per perception to see things through. Revelation chapter 2. Verse 1, let's speak it please. Revelation 2 verse 1, to the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them to be liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Well, that sounds like a great place. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You have left your first love, him. You have fallen away from your true divine fellowship. You don't seek him every morning like you used to. You're compromising your relationship with him. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you what? Repent. repent. But this you have, that you hate the Nicolaitans, of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of paradise of God. Amen? They've lost their first divine fellowship. They've <laughs> that brings perceptions of truth. Many lack perception because of lack of fellowship. Does everybody get it? 2 Corinthians 6. You don't get unveiled on the mountaintop. You get unveiled in the valley. <laughs> Everybody has the veil. You're either going in to the desert. <laughs> you're in the desert or you're coming out. <laughs> Welcome to the earth. 2 Corinthians 6.14. Do not be what? Unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? What communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them, I will walk among them, I will be their people, and they shall be my people. Why? Therefore, if you'll do this, come out from among them. Be separate, says the Lord. And don't touch and agree with unclean. And I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you will be my children, my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Again, fellowship. <laughs> Many don't realize that they have fellowship with demons. They have more fellowship with demons than they do with God. And it causes separation or distance fellowship with the Holy Spirit. 
This is where the word warns us about deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. It causes a falling away. Listen, the falling away just doesn't mean someone's going to sin and going to hell. It means they've drifted from divine relationship. Amen? Go to Malachi 3. Malachi 3, verse 16. Let's speak it. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another. In other words, they were in fellowship with one another. They all had reverence to God. And the Lord listened and he heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him. For those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. He says, they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I make them my what? Jewels. I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall be able to what? Discern. Between the righteous and the wicked. Between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. There is that discernment. Amen? Why? Because perception is restored. Where there's perception restored, there's discernment. Why? Because of the close relationships. Everybody understand. First John chapter 1 and verse 1. Everybody there? Let's speak it. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested, and we have seen, and we bear witness, and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested to us, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you, that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you, that your joy may be what? Full. There's that fellowship. Philippians 1, and we'll close here. It's verse 3. Let's speak it. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, Make a request for you with all joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident in this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Just as it is right for me to think this of you all because I have you in my heart inasmuch as both in my chains and in the defense and the confirmation of the gospel you all are partakers with me in grace. For God is my witness, how greatly I long for you with all affection of Jesus Christ. In this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent and that you may sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, to the glory and the praise of God Almighty. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise be to God. Lord, we thank you for your word. We understand that the time and season we are in. And we ask for the clearance, clearance, clearing of perception. And a close divine relationship with you. That we may discern and understand the things that are happening at a time. And not fall into the trap of fear. Knowing that you got a plan that we can trust in Jesus' name. Anybody said amen?